bees! Lots and lots of bees! <gasps> no! Oh my god, how do they do this so quickly? Bees work really fast. But bee rescuers do too. Jeff and Julie love bees. They've been rescuing them for 14 years. Say hi. Hi. They've saved them from walls and chimneys and barbecues. Hey, Jono, what do you want out of your bees, huh? Jeff and Julie think bees are misunderstood. They don't want to sting you. They've chosen me. I am their new queen. They want to make honey and collect pollen. Orange pollen cans. And use their little bee tongues to get nectar. But it's not safe for bees to be in a house or a chimney. Oh, there we go. So the bee rescuers need to protect them. When bees build their home in an unsafe place, Jeff and Julie know that when they open the hive, they're going to find bees who don't know why they're being moved. They're confused and scared and give off scents that warn the other bees there's danger. But Jeff and Julie are gentle. They grab their special bee smoker to block the danger scents and calm them down. They show the bees they're here to take them to their new, safer home. In a box? How do the bees know to go into the box? Because inside is the one bee they love most in the whole world. The queen! That is some cute motherly attention right there. That's why in every rescue, they need to find her. Queenie! Queenie, are you out there? Better make it quick. There's the queen. Already. Then they put her in a special cage and into the box. And the bees follow after. Once the bees are in the box, Jeff and Julie bring them to wide open land, where finally the bees are safe. They can build hives, find flowers, and raise new bee families without anyone bothering them. Bees build their homes really fast. They made this in just one week. Which means bee rescuers always have new bees to save. What channel is it? <laughs> but Jeff and Julie love rescuing them because they know bees are wonderful. The way they help each other and protect their queen and clean themselves like a cat. So, as bee rescuers, they don't worry about a few stings here and there. They just reach in and suit up and wait for the next call. So uh, now we are ready for a flight to the middle climates and my passenger is uh, sleeping. It's Tongo's first time flying in an airplane. So he's curious and pretty scared. But Anthony knows the best place for him. Hey, little boy, ready for it? Safe in his lap. The first time rescuers saved a chimp far away from the sanctuary, they weren't sure how to get Pinga back safely. So they called Anthony, a pilot who loves animals. Could he help bring Pinga back? Anthony had never done anything like it before, but he was willing to try. Because the only thing he loved more than flying was baby chimps. But there was one problem. 
Kinga was too scared to fly in the special crate her rescuers made for her. So Anthony let Pinga fly up front as his first baby chimp co-pilot. Now, Anthony flies rescued chimps all the time and knows just how to get them ready when he meets a chimp for the first time, he takes it slow. They're usually just babies. And they might be afraid. But Anthony knows the best way to a baby chimp's heart. Good banana. Good banana. After a good sleep, hey boy. and more bananas, it's finally time for their first flight. Anthony's not sure how they'll feel about being so high in the air. Some are nervous. <laughs> or worse, curious. So Anthony makes room for them in his lap, and then they take off. Up in the air, Anthony knows all the tricks to comfort the babies. And when he picks their fleas, they always fall asleep. They usually snooze the whole way. But Anthony brings a bottle of milk for wake-ups. All went well. Very chill flights. Once Anthony lands the plane, they meet Itsaso, the sanctuary's director. She knows the right body language to get a chimp to trust her, and they always jump right into her arms. One day, these chimps will grow up and go back to the wild. Until then, they love calling the sanctuary home. And Anthony? He's got more chimps to fly. But that's not all. He's training the next group of pilots who will one day pick up a scared chimp, hold him tight, and take off into the sky. It's 7 a.m. and Ellie the Flamingo Rescuer is up early because who could sleep through this? Breakfast at the shelter means the cutest, pinkest stampede. These wild flamingos were once rescued by Ellie, and now they come back every day for a meal and a cuddle. But there are some flamingos who need more help than just food, like Baby, who Ellie rescued as a chick. In fact, Baby was the first chick she took in. When Ellie moved to the island, she noticed there were lots of flamingos who needed a rescue. But the island didn't have a bird shelter. So she fixed that right away. Before long, Ellie had her hands full. And she loved them all. The ones who hugged, the ones who played, the ones who snored. The ones who did whatever this is. But Baby always had a special place at the shelter, right by Ellie's side. Baby and the other chicks needed help growing strong so they could go live in the wild. That meant learning to drink from a bottle and learning how to share. get there. Sometimes flamingos came in who needed even more help than baby. Flamingos who weren't feeling well at all. And while they were resting, they needed to stand as much as possible. So they got their own special flamingo sling. Or sometimes they were stuck in a mangrove and needed to hitch a ride. That's Captain Flamingo to you. After a while, Baby and the chicks had gotten big enough to start finding their food in the water. 
and they were certainly learning how to be loud. Ellie knew it was time for her to take them back to the wild. But how do you carry a tall bird who loves to run and flap their wings? In a flamingo sleeping bag. After Ellie and her volunteers zipped everyone up, they all got cozy for a little drive. Then it was time to bring them to the beach. And... Seeing the flamingos excited to be in their new home is Ellie's favorite part. She loves watching them grow up and is so happy they're finally home. That's why it's hard to say goodbye every time. But she knows they never really leave. Because every morning at 7 a.m., she'll hear the best noise in the world. Dodo Kids! Help the kittens find the subscribe button.